tourism is one of the most important and fast expanding sectors of the world economy and within this global business is a growing niche, halal travel. The Muslim market spend on travel is estimated to grow from $142 billion in 2014 to $233 billion in 2020. Halal tourism is created to give people choices. Certification is definitely a challenge. Currently we use this term halal tourism because we need a term to sort of put everything together. Although we are Muslim, we are still travelers. We still want to have a good time, we want to have good clean fun. This program looks at the potential business proposition of halal tourism within the wider travel sector. The Halal Tourism Conference, the largest international showcase of halal travel, was held in Konya, Turkey this year. The city chosen as the tourism capital of the Islamic world for 2016 by the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. The events brought together the global halal tourism industry and professionals looking for opportunities in this growing sector. Many destinations around the world are starting to tap into this, including non-Muslim countries. So my long-term objective is to bring communities, destinations together and bring their industry forward. Evet, Konya, e, yurt içinden, yurt dışından çok sayıda ziyaretçi kabul eden, çok sayıda turistin geldiği bir şehir. İnanç turizmi merkezlerinden birisidir Türkiye'de. Konya. Bu yapısıyla Helal Turizm Konferansı'nın Konya'da düzenlenmesi Konya'ya çok uygun düşmektedir. According to the Pew Research Center, a non-partisan fact tank, Muslims are the world's fastest grown religious group. The number of Muslims is expected to increase by 73%, from 1.6 billion in 2010 to almost 2.8 billion in 2050. With this growth comes an increase in demand for products and services that align with the principles of Islam. Halal tourism caters for Muslim vacationers who abide by the principles of Islam. But what is unique about the products and services offered within this sector? The unique thing about the Muslim travel industry is that it offers Muslims uh, places to pray and places to have halal meal options, for example, on airlines or hotels. Um, in addition to that, they offer Muslim-friendly amenities, such as segregated pools and spas for women. Previously, for most Muslims, a holiday or trip abroad meant a visit to their ancestral home or a pilgrimage to Mecca. However, the travel aspirations of Muslims have evolved to destinations far and wide, in part due to the more adventurous approach to life from the younger generation. The young Muslim demographic for travel is the biggest in the industry at the moment. They are looking for new ways of travel. Their usage of social media as a means of researching, of sharing experiences, of uh, buying products and services, certainly in the tourism space, uh, is documented to be very high. And for halal tourism, what you're going to see is the services that appeal to the young millennial is what will be what will need to be focused on. I think this has a lot to do with millennials having that thirst for adventure, wanting to see the world, having a little bit of extra time and disposable income to branch out and travel to additional destinations. Some of the trends globally that are emerging and becoming more and more popular, for example, are adventure travel, volunteerism, where people actually go and volunteer in the country, socially conscious travel. The Thomson Reuters State of the Global Islamic Economy Report 2016 estimates the Muslim market spend on outbound travel to be $142 billion as of 2014. This excludes Hajj and Umrah. That's 11% of global expenditure. This sector has the potential to increase to $233 billion by 2020. That's 13% of global expenditure. The size of the Muslim market is projected to be two, 233 billion in 2020. 
and the reason is following current trends in terms of the growth and also um, taking into consideration growth drivers such as the rise of per capita incomes globally and specifically in the Muslim market it's growing at double the rate of the global market and the Muslim market is a younger demographic which, which spurs the growth of the travel market. In recent years, halal hotels have taken off. Realizing the success of the Sharia-compliant banking and investment sector, they are modifying their establishments to offer halal products and services, hoping to achieve similar results. We give extended services for the Muslims, right? Uh, extended services such like as the halal food and uh, prayer facilities and their ease to clean themselves. Uh, and that's all. The, those kind of facilities of services will not jeopardize our business. We just started the Philippine Halal Tourism Project just in January, and it's really jump-starting the certification of hotels, resorts, and, and uh, restaurants all over the Philippines. And just to address the major concern that uh, halal conscious travelers go hungry in our country when they visit us. It's not going to have like a lot of investment to do, to, to do that. And the tourists, the non-Muslim non tourists as well, is not going to be disturbed by the facilities that we're, uh, that we're giving to the Muslim visitors. We're cutting off the alcohols and we're closing our um, music house, clubhouse, and the revenue is going up 20% per annum. These services also extend to some airlines that are accommodating Muslim tourists. With an ever-expanding variety of in-flight special meals, halal is on the menu too. Some flights offer Islamic programs as a part of the media entertainment offered and the announcement of prayer times. With a boost in halal services and products come positive responses, but also some skepticism. Critics argue that Muslim vacationers are discerning enough to avoid any aspect of a holiday or trip that doesn't fall in line with their religious principles. Halal tourism is created to give people choices. We're not here to say to someone, this is what you have to do. We're not going to countries to say, this is what you have to do. We want to give people opportunities. We want to give people the platform to choose what they want to do to go on holiday. Yes, you can try and find halal food, but isn't it nice to uh, go to a restaurant and see the halal certificate prominently displayed and you don't have to worry, or take a trip with a travel agency that tra takes care of all your needs. As this travel segment grows, it's drawing attention in terms of its health and development. Mastercard and Crescent Rating, a Singapore-based company focused on halal tourism, inked a deal at the 2014 World Islamic Economic Forum to develop the Global Muslim Travel Index, also known as GMTI. So GMTI helps uh, destinations, travel businesses, uh, investors and travelers to understand how the destinations are catering to the Muslim travelers. It helps a lot the destinations to start improving on how they cater to the Muslim travelers. And they can also benchmark you know, how, uh, how they fare against another destination. So then for the Muslim travelers, it also helps them to make you know, uh, educated uh, choices. So if they want uh, a destination that they want to be very worry-free, so they can, they can uh, you know, choose a destination which is very high in our ranking. A question arises about whether using halal as a prefix to tourism is necessary, as it falls within the same wider remit of travel and holidays. Is this sector perceived from a religious viewpoint rather than from a business angle? If we, if we take the name out of it, it's family-friendly travel. I think currently we use this term halal tourism because we need a term to sort of put everything together but, but at the end of the day it, it, uh, sometimes you feel that has a religious connotation but actually this has nothing to do with religion. It's like any other travel market, you need to understand the, the behaviour, the requirements of a, of a certain segment so that you can cater to them. The paradigm of the, or the mindset of the, uh, of the stakeholders in the industry itself because they have to think this is, uh, what you call it, uh, not really uh, on the uh, political or the religious part. We, we have to consider it in the industry part. Although it's becoming increasingly popular amongst those who practice Islam, can the Muslim travel market be offered as an attractive proposition to non-Muslims? Does it appear exclusive and perhaps potentially deter non-Muslims from considering this as an option? I wouldn't get too worried about the idea that halal tourism 
is just exclusively for Muslims or that it should just be marketed to Muslims. I think that we should think about affinity groups and, and, and common ground as well, because actually you've got, uh, of the millennial population, you've got young people who have Muslim friends and non-Muslim friends. And if a group of people are gonna go on holiday, then it kind of makes sense that everyone is included. According to the MasterCard Crescent Rating GMTI 2016, Malaysia topped the list for the second year running in the index, while United Arab Emirates, Turkey, Indonesia and Qatar make the top five. Malaysia provides the services facilities for Muslim travellers such as prayer facilities, halal food, other criteria such as the reach to the various markets, the ongoing promotion, advertising campaign, and then the uh, uh, visa uh, uh, policy that is friendly to almost all, if not all, of the Muslim countries around, around the world. And of course, connectivity. We have almost all of the OIC home carriers flying directly into the Kuala Lumpur International Airport. So combination of all these factors uh, place Malaysia at the top in terms of uh, the most uh, popular destination among Muslim travellers. They understood that this was a strategic market early on, way before anybody else started looking at it. This was an important market. They were educating the whole uh, travel industry about this market. They were not shy in reaching out to the rest of the world, saying that you know we are Muslim friendly. I think that's why they are still number one in, our, in, in GMTI. Halal tourism, although niche within the wider travel market, is fast evolving and has gained the attention of the conventional sector, which is increasingly becoming aware of the business potential of the Muslim spend. These non-Muslim countries realised that they do not have a lot of products to offer, but they understand the power of halal branding, which is in terms of trillions of dollars, so they saw their niche in tourism. The conventional travel market and, and, and uh, has definitely recognized that, especially in the last 12 to 24 months, they have recognized this as one of the key uh, growth engines for their, for their destinations. In Japan, great efforts are in effect to cater specifically to the Muslim traveler by offering prayer facilities at airports, halal food and even Muslim-friendly tours of the cities. According to the Japanese tourist office, the number of Indonesians visiting the archipelago in 2013 was up 37% on the previous year, while 21% more Malaysians came. I think that Japan's uh, increase in attention to halal tourism is a little bit of both of the Olympics that are coming up, and additionally they've recognized that Muslims are the biggest spenders in the travel market. The government is giving incentives is, is giving uh, money to the people, is giving uh, a different kind of uh, schemes to attract investors to, to uh, come and the local companies to convert their product to, to halal. Other non-Muslim destinations looking to open their doors to Muslim tourists include the Philippines. Even with a population that is 90% Christian, great efforts are being made to capitalize on the spending power of Muslim travelers. It is now a national policy in the Philippines to develop halal tourism. Marching orders from our ministry, from our minister himself, is to talk about halal as a lifestyle. A lifestyle not only for Muslims, but also for non-Muslims, because of the principles that it embodies, like uh, stewardship of the earth, uh, high uh, standards of sanitation, and the like, and, and uh, living a modest life. Uh, and those very important virtues and principles that are also very close to the Filipinos' hearts. Although London and Paris and other European cities are places of great attraction for tourists, Europe as a whole, however, still has the space to develop halal tourism. This business is relatively untapped in this part of the world. For Muslims themselves, I believe one of the reasons why they're not traveling to non-Muslim countries is because it's a lot easier to travel to a Muslim country. Everything's already ready for them. Europe needs to spend money if there is a market opportunity and if they want to be engaged in halal tourism the market can't grow itself any business needs investment especially when it comes to marketing activities advertising branding public relations there are scattered examples of industries or travel industry players who are actually accommodating the muslim market but uh, it needs to be more 
uh, government-led or more combined efforts rather than scattered efforts by hotels or travel companies. So Europe can look at a couple of destinations in Asia. One definitely is, is Singapore. Muslim arrivals are about 20% of the total arrivals to Singapore. So definitely a, a mature Muslim market actually, definitely a destination to look at. The world constantly experiences geopolitical disorder. Eyes have been focused on Europe lately, with France, Belgium and Turkey most recently encountering terror attacks. Terrorist attacks can be done anywhere in the world, like Paris, like Brussels, and also, of course, in Istanbul, we had bad experiences so far this year. But uh, we try to come back to the terrorism, you know, and with the help of our uh, the friends uh, across the world. So that's why we believe that Turkey uh, is a safe country. Tabi, maalesef terör bir insanlık suçu olarak yer yüzünde birçok coğrafyada kendini zaman zaman gösteriyor. Terörizme karşı bütün insanlığın birleşmesini arzu ederiz. For those in search of religious certainty, as well as profit, this can be a challenge as standards vary between countries. Malaysia and Brunei are examples of where state authorities regulate halal certification. However, in other countries, defining religious authenticity is left to businesses, trading bodies and private certifiers. Certification is definitely a challenge. With food, there are already hundreds of certifiers in Europe alone. If we can have a conference and then, uh, and then the OIC will be the, the, the umbrella of the whole thing, and then we can come up to a same perception, basic parameters that will unite everyone. There are 48 Muslim-majority countries around the world, each with different cultures, outlooks and levels of piety. Is it possible to achieve a united standard for halal across such a diverse range of cultures? If you're looking at aspirations, you can't have standardization in the same way because different people's living habits, cultures, aspirations are going to change. And so I would say that actually it's a bit of a red herring or a, or a Trojan horse to want to move towards an industry which is standardized and there are standardized market conditions. So you must be very careful in coming out a universal standard that can, you know, uh, encapsulate the, the, the needs of the Muslim travelers. Costing in any trade is critical, and more so for up-and-coming sectors that have to set competitive prices in order to vie for business with more established players within the industry. As with every customer base, there are different segments. So you, you know, when you look at the luxury segment, which is a significant, significant portion of the Muslim travel market, um, pricing is not an issue. It's, it's not the core driver, it's the experience. And the uh, middle segment, that's where pricing does become very important and Muslim travelers are very sensitive to pricing. It is expensive because people are trying to take advantage from it. In reality, it is more competitive because the standard is very simple. The service providers, if they understand the standards and they get their hotels certified, the problem is where people start implementing without getting certification. Halal tourism should maybe uh, think about what's being said with regards to price, not think that they have to deliver the most cheap object or service, but the best value and immersive experience. If that costs more, then it costs more. Explain why it costs more. And if it's as good as they say it is, be confident that people will spend the money on it. As a result of demand, the Muslim travel market is continuing to grow. And there's not only an increased need to provide halal facilities and services, but training too to enable businesses worldwide to grow this sector. The matter of fact is we don't have enough experts globally to be able to, to serve the industry to offer sufficient training to enough people. So it's something that we have to do more work on. Destinations and uh, companies in these core Islamic markets, they're just starting to get familiar with this halal tourism. You get this stare of what is halal tourism. As we see, this market is still in its infancy. So training is a very uh, important part of building awareness, uh, of growing the uh, ecosystem. From Muslim nations to non-Muslim nations, there is the desire to develop halal tourism as it offers much in the way of increasing trade and ultimately profit. Equally, Muslim travelers are expecting to be catered to. There is an increased assertiveness by this consumer base to 
uh, proactively asking for things and, and, and hence there for multinational this is a differentiated point. What has to improve is the information gathered through databases. So if you've got a portal, if you've got an app that's collecting uh, the customer's journey or the data, that data needs to be funneled in and then fed back to um, tourism providers, hotels, so that they can provide a better service. Creating bilater bilateral uh, agreements with either governments or private sector is crucial to the success of developing halal tourism. By introducing that this is the products that is not only for Muslim, but also for everybody, because it's a family friendly. Although development is in discussion, there do lay some challenges ahead regarding authenticity. I have seen some uh, business entity that claim they or call themselves as Sharia compliant or halal tourism. You must be very, very careful when you identify yourself in this way. Sharia compliant or halal tourism. What does it mean? It, it does not only mean no alcohol or the server, if it's women wearing the hijab. It's beyond that. How do you do your day-to-day -day operation? Is it along the Muslim fundamentals, the positive values of the religion, and your source of income before you start your business? Currently, halal tourism sits within the wider travel sector but has not been adopted by all. Moving forward, will it continue to sit alongside conventional tourism or become assimilated into the broader market? Halal tourism is already integrating itself within the wider tourism industry uh, because non-Muslim destinations or even companies are looking to tap into the industry because they see the value of the Muslim travellers and they obviously see the, the expenditure of the Muslim travellers. I would say eventually the name Halal will disappear and it will be called something else. I think the way forward for the Halal tourism industry is to recognise that although we are Muslim, we are still travellers. We still want to have a good time, we want to have good clean fun. With the current industry understanding, how is business expected to unfold for halal tourism? I think that the market will grow and the list of things that people want will also grow and it will go beyond food and prayer mats and segregation to entertainment, to um, adventure tours, to all sorts of things. It depends on the economy. Uh, when eco Islamic uh, world's economy grow, the, of course halal tourism uh, will be higher and higher. Whether it's a Muslim country or a non-Muslim country, because we need to work together to be able to create a bigger platform for companies who are still struggling, who are wanting to tap into the industry, to give them that position to move forward. The Halal Tourism Conference 2016 highlighted that regardless of the challenges this sector faces, the demand is currently fueling the supply and propelling halal tourism in front of the conventional market as a viable business opportunity. The move by increasing numbers of Muslim and non-Muslim countries to embrace halal tourism will expand global visitor source markets, benefiting Muslim travellers. Representing 10% of the entire travel economy, the Muslim travel market is one of the fastest growing tourism sectors in the world.